Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Processed appliance should be inspected carefully for imperfections before it's tried in the mouth. The palatal side is inspected to be sure there are no artifacts that may interfere with the seating of the bite plane. Special attention should be paid to all occlusal surfaces. The plane is placed in the mouth and tested. It should seat perfectly without any rock. Self-curing acrylic should not be used in attempting to eliminate rocking. Adding acrylic to the tooth surfaces may cause movement of teeth. Simultaneous contact of the teeth with the appliance must be achieved. Occlusal adjustment is begun by adding strips of 28-gauge green casting wax to the occlusal surface. The jaws are tapped together in centric relation. Premature contacts are indicated in the second mandibular molar areas. The bite plane is replaced in the mouth and carbon paper used to mark the prematurities. The mandible is guided into sharp tapping contacts in centric relation. This testing can be accomplished one side at a time or on both sides simultaneously. Contact marks from the carbon paper are seen in both molar areas at the locations previously indicated in the wax. The heavy contact markings are removed with a wheel type stone. The stone should be fairly large in order to maintain a flat surface. Only a thin layer of acrylic is removed. Centric relation contacts are remarked. An increased number of teeth are now contacting the bite plane. Several places still demonstrate lack of contact with the mandibular teeth. The marks are again adjusted. More grinding is done on the posterior than on anterior contacts in order to bring all mandibular teeth into contact with the acrylic surface. The occlusion is tested again. The closures are made in centric relation. that all the mandibular teeth are now making contact in centric relation. Because these contacts are on a flat surface, the patient will have freedom in centric and also have even contacts in unguided complete closures. The eccentric excursion contacts are also recorded with carbon paper. Guided lateral excursions are done first followed by guided protrusive excursions. The cuspid guidance markings indicate uneven contacts. Adjustment is made to permit smooth gliding movements. 
The patient should be able to move into lateral and protrusive excursions without interference. Nothing should hamper these movements. The cuspid guidance should begin about one millimeter from the centric stops. Lateral and protrusive excursions are registered again with carbon paper. Both protrusive and lateral excursion patterns are now smooth. However, there still is some lateral guidance from a wide contact registered in the right second molar area. There should be small, narrow, centric contacts in the acrylic, but no evidence of lateral guidance. Therefore, the buccal aspect of the marks are eliminated. The bite plane has been polished to a high gloss and is ready to be delivered. The polishing should be done carefully, so no occlusal contacts are lost. As the bite plane is delivered, it is given the final test. The patient is asked if it feels smooth and comfortable. It should feel even, both in centric relation and in the various eccentric excursions. The patient has used the bite plane every night and sometimes during the day for three weeks. It is tested in various excursions. The lateral movements are somewhat jerky, indicating interferences in the bite plane. A slight catch is demonstrated in the acrylic between the centric stop and the cuspid guidance. The patient has been wearing pathways into the bite plane, indicating that she has been bruxing. This indicates the need for adjustment. 28 gauge wax is heated slightly and placed over the occlusal surface. The appliance is placed in the patient's mouth and centric relation is recorded. Only a few mandibular teeth penetrated the wax. The heaviest mark corresponds to the left second molar. Very light contacts are seen in the cuspid areas. The wax has been removed and the contacts recorded with carbon paper. In this demonstration, the carbon paper is being used on both sides simultaneously. The heavy contact marks in the left second molar area are relieved. Centric relation contacts are again recorded with wax. A number of occlusal imprints are now evident. However, the heaviest contacts are made by the cuspids. Some mandibular teeth still do not make contact. The wax has been removed and a carbon paper recording is made. This time, the lateral excursions also are tested. There is evidence of interference related to the cuspid guidance and heavy centric contact markings for the cuspids and the left molar. The marks related to the heavy cuspid contacts in centric and lateral guidance are eliminated. Premature motor contacts are relieved. The bite plane is again tested with wax. It must be properly seated each time it is tried in. Heavy contacts are recorded in the left motor regions. The cuspids are in heavy contact, while the rest of the anterior teeth are not touching.
Centric relation and lateral as well as protrusive excursions are registered with carbon paper. Carbon markings indicate heavy contacts in the left molar and anterior region. Notice the lack of contacts or light contacts in several other areas. All heavy contact markings are relieved carefully. It is important to take off only a small amount each time. Wax is again placed over the bite plane and a new recording made. Contacts are now seen in the molar areas on both sides. However, the contacts are uneven and some mandibular anterior teeth are not touching. A carbon paper recording is repeated. Heavy markings are seen for the left second molar and for the bicuspids in left lateral excursion. A few contacts are noted in the front and on the right side. All heavy contact markings are removed. is again used to test the contacts. This time, all mandibular teeth made even contact in centric relation. Carbon paper is used to record contact patterns, both in centric relation and lateral excursions. The carbon marking demonstrates even contacts in centric relation for all the teeth and smooth gliding contact patterns in the cuspid rise areas for lateral and protrusive excursions. The appliance has been polished. Any imprints from the opposing teeth have been removed. The bite plane is tested in the mouth for smoothness of gliding movements. Notice that the jerky movement pattern observed initially has been eliminated. The patient will have to be re-examined in three to four weeks. Any indications of wear on the bite plane or uneven contacts will require readjustment. The bite plane is inspected for evidence of wear. By allowing light to reflect from its surface, indication of any occlusal wear patterns can be seen. None are evident. The patient has been perfectly comfortable. The bite plane is again tested in centric relation. Note even contact marks from all of the mandibular teeth. Right lateral and protrusive excursions are tested with wax. Note the even marks from lateral and protrusive guidance contacts for the cuspids. Only centric contacts are marked for the other teeth. Left lateral excursion and protrusive movements are recorded in a similar fashion. Note the well-defined cuspid guidance in protrusive and lateral excursions, while there are only centric contacts for the other teeth. The bite plane feels even to the patient, both in centric relation and in unguided closures. The lateral and protrusive as well as combination movements are smooth and unimpeded. Occlusal record is repeated with carbon paper. Centric contacts and cuspid guidance patterns are ideal.
concentric relation can now be recorded without the bite plane. This slide could not be recorded before treatment. The pain and discomfort have been eliminated. Treatment by occlusal adjustment can now be accomplished with the assurance that the previous pathologic influences on the temporomandibular joint by the faulty occlusion have been eliminated. Stability of the occlusion after occlusal adjustment can be assured. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.